In this video, we're going to go over the conjunction rules in Fitch style system. Let's get to it. All right, before we start looking at conjunction formally, let's take a look at it informally. <clears throat> and in doing so, what we want to pay attention to is why um, certain types of inferences are good inferences with conjunctions. So if you'll remember, a conjunction is true. Just in case all of its conjuncts are true. So what that means is if we're given a conjunction to be true, we know each of its conjuncts are true, so it's a good inference to move then from that conjunction to one of its conjuncts. So maybe the conjunction is grass is green and snow is white. Well, if I get to accept this to be true, and because it's only true when both of its conjuncts are true, then I know I can, it's a good inference to move from this conjunction to either one of its conjuncts. For instance, grass is green. Or alternatively, snow is white. So that's why that ends up being a good inference. We have a second kind of inference that is good with conjunctions, with respect to conjunctions. Because a conjunction is true uh, just in case all of its conjuncts are true, then if we have a statement such as grass is green, another statement snow is white, And I get to accept this statement to be true and that statement to be true. Then I know that the grass is green and the snow is white. Is true because on the basis of this, I know that both of the conjunctions of this statement um, are true. So then I know that conjunction is true. Uh, so that's why these inferences are good inferences, namely they're truth preserving. Based on the meaning of conjunction, if I have a conjunction that I know is true, then I know that any of its conjuncts are true. Likewise, if I um, get to start off with a set of statements, each of one, each of them I get to accept to be true, then if I make a conjunction out of them where only those statements are the conjuncts of that conjunction, then that conjunction has to be true by the meaning of conjunction. Okay, so let's look at the formal representations of these two types of inferences in Fitch. All right, so here we're going to look at conjunction elimination. That's uh, one of our conjunction rules in Fitch style system. And it maps onto one of those informal good inferences that we just looked at. Specifically, if you're given some conjunction and what this is, this particular notation is expressing is that it doesn't matter how many conjuncts there are in that conjunction. It could be two conjuncts, it could be a million, it could be more than a million conjuncts. The idea is given a conjunction, then you can assert any one of its conjuncts. So the idea then that this di diagram here is trying to express is if you get to accept this to be true, if you get to have that, then because a conjunction is true if and only if all of its conjuncts are true, then it's a good inference to pull out or infer any one of those conjuncts. So PI is supposed to range over even P1 and even PN, whatever PN is. Okay? So the way that it works then is anytime you see a pattern where you have a conjunction, it's okay to infer one of its conjuncts. 
but you have to tell the audience or good note keeping on your own behalf. But whoever is going to read your proof, you have to let them know that the reason you're doing this is because of conjunction elimination. And then you have to cite the step corresponding to the conjunction that you're applying the conjunction elimination rule to. So it, these circles in yellow need to be the same step number. Now the way that we do that in our Fitch computer program is a little different. Uh, we need the orange marker placed on the conjunct that we're pulling out from the conjunction, that we're inferring from the conjunction. Um, so we need the orange marker here, and then we need to highlight the conjunction, the step number of the conjunction um, that we're applying the conjunction rule to. And we're going to see uh, an example of that in the Fitch computer program here in just a moment. All right, so here we have a fairly simple example of an application of the conjunction elimination rule. Uh, first thing to note, we've got our Fitch bar here, which is telling us that everything above it is a premise. So that means this first step is a premise. It says that A is a cube and B is large and C is a dodecahedron. It's a conjunction with three conjuncts. And we already know infer informally that a conjunction is true if and only if all of its conjuncts individually are true. So since we get to accept that to be true, we know that we get to accept each of these individually to be true. Which means that we can infer any of those three, and we know that that's going to be a good inference because our inference to that will be truth-preserving. The thing that we've inferred, the statement that we've inferred, will be true. So notice that we're doing that in this case because our inference, which is at step two in this particular example, just is that conjunct. So since the conjunction is true, and that means that this conjunct is true, that means that's got to be true as well because they say just the very same thing. Okay, so we know that's a good inference, but in our Fitch system, we have to prove that. And what we do is we use the conjunction elimination rule to tell somebody who's reading our proof or just good note-taking take, note for our own sake. We use the conjunction elimination rule to say, hey, the reason why we get to pull B is large from the conjunction A is a cube and B is large and C is a dodecahedron is because of conjunction elimination, which relies on the meaning of conjunction, namely that if the conjunction is true, then all of its conjuncts are true. And all of its conjuncts are true only if the conjunction is true. <clears throat> all right, so that's why um, this is a good inference. Lastly, you'll notice the step number that's being cited is the step number of the conjunction that the conjunction elimination rule is being applied to. Okay, now let's see how that looks in the Fitch computer program. All right, so here we're going to take a look at the example um, in the Fitch computer program that we were just taking a look at. Uh, you'll notice on the orange marker here, it's on step one, which is above the Fitch bar. So this step one is our premise, A is a cube, and B is large, and uh, C is a dodecahedron. <clears throat> I hit control A. I hit control A, that gives me my next step. And in our example, we had inferred that B is large. So what I need to do then is I need to pick uh, the rule that I want to use to tell somebody, hey, this is the reason why I'm making this inference and it's the reason why we can trust that it's truth-preserving or is a valid inference. That was uh, um, elimination conjunction. And you can even see that uh, if we hover the 
cursor over the conjunction sign, it shows us the rule of conjunction elimination. All right, um, notice if I only do that, I'll get an X if I try to check it out. And that's because I have to cite the step that I'm using. And we do that in this case by highlighting it when my orange marker is still on the inference that we're pulling from, in this case, pulling from the conjunction in step one. Uh, and you can set up your program so that it gives us the particular step number as well. Now we'll see that that is a good inference. Of course, based on the meaning of conjunction, then by conjunction elimination, I can infer any of those conjuncts. So I can infer that C is a dodecahedron. And that'll come out to be good. I can infer that A is a cube. And we see that that's a good inference as well. So any time that you get to accept a conjunction to be true, you get to infer any of its conjunctions. Any, I'm sorry, any of its conjuncts. All right, let's take a look at the other rule that's associated with conjunction, namely conjunction introduction. And the idea behind conjunction introduction is that because we know a conjunction is true if and only if all of its conjuncts are true, then if we are to um, establish a set of statements as being true, or we get to accept them to be true, then if we form a conjunction out of those statements, where um, those statements are, con are conjuncts of that conjunction and only those statements are conjuncts of, those con of the, that conjunction, then we're going to know that the conjunction formed out of them are true. Why? Because each of those conjuncts are true. We'll know that each of those conjuncts are true. So that's the idea behind conjunction introduction. And that is what this diagram is expressing, only it's including that citation as well. So we have a statement, and then however many other statements we might include, and then ending with some other statement, we can make a conjunction out of all of those as long as only these statements that we get to accept as being true are included in the conjunction that we're inferring. All right, and the way that we explain to somebody reading our proof why this is a good inference is by citing the rule conjunction introduction at the uh, line in which we are making the inference. And then we cite each of the statements that end up being conjuncts in the conjunction that we make. Right? So that's how we explain. That's why this is a good inference. That's why I get to make this move. All right, let's take a look of an example in which conjunction introduction is being applied. All right, so in this example, we have our Fitch bar right there. So that tells me that everything above the Fitch bar is a premise, and I get to accept it to be true. So I get to accept A is a cube is true. I get to accept that B is large is true, and I get to accept that C is a dodecahedron is true. Okay, so if I then look at the inference that's being made in this example, I'll see that the first conjunct just is 1, the second conjunct just is 2, and the third conjunct just is 3. So since I get to accept all of those premises to be true, that means I know that I get to have each of these to be true as well. Well, a conjunction is true if and only if all of its conjuncts is true. 
So that's why for is going to be a good inference since I, prior to inferring it, I get to have each of its conjuncts to be true. Then I know any conjunction made out of them and only them uh, will be true as well. All right, so um, that is what this is saying. So we apply the rule to where we're making our inference. Um, so it's somebody that's reading this. It's giving that reasoning that we that I just gave, and notice that it cites each of the steps that we're then using as our conjuncts in this conjunction. So that's how we would apply conjunction introduction in this case. Now let's take a look at how we would do this in the Fitch computer program. All right, so here in the Fitch computer program, we've got our Fitch bar right here, telling us that everything above the Fitch bar is um, a premise, and so that we get to accept them to be true. So we get to accept that A is a cube is true, we get to accept that B is large is true, and we get to accept that C is a dodecahedron is true. And we want to uh, make a conjunction out of those statements. So we have A is a cube, and B is large, and C is a dodecahedron. Okay? So the rule that we were discussing to do that is conjunction introduction. You'll see that, again, by hovering on the conjunction sign, it'll give us the rule for that, the diagram for that. And notice that if I then just try to check this by only citing a rule, it'll come out with an X because I need to tell the person who's reading this what, what steps, what things that I've already get to accept to be true are guaranteeing that the inference that I'm making is a um, is also true. So I have to cite all three of these. If I just cite two of them, it's going to come out with a red X. If I cite all of them, it'll come out with a green check mark letting us know that that's a good inference. Notice um, it doesn't matter the order that I put those statements that we're relying on in making the conjunction. It'll st uh, still turn out to be a good inference because all that matters is because premise one, two, and three, step one and two, step one, two, and three are true, that guarantees, in this case, that 5 is true. Of course, it guarantees that 4 is true as well, or any other combination that we uh, make out of those. All right, so before ending this video, I'd like to um, take a look at some slightly more complicated examples of conjunction elimination and conjunction introduction uh, so that you have a, a decent grasp on it for when you do the exercise sets. All right, the point of this exercise is to demonstrate that it doesn't matter how complex a conjunct is of a conjunction, you can still use the conjunction elimination rule to infer that conjunct. So looking at our premise here, step one, it says both if A is large, then C is cube, and either B is the same shape as D or B is small. All right, so... It may not be obvious, obvious to you, but that is one conjunct of the conjunction, and this complex sentence is the second conjunct of that, con of that conjunction. So the sentence in one is a conjunction. It just has complex statements for its conjuncts. And so... Uh, what we can do then is we can infer
either of those conjuncts, because if the conjunction is true, the conjuncts must be true, based on the meaning of conjunction. And we do that with conjunction elimination. We cite the conjunction that it's coming from. And we can see that in either case, we can pull that complex sentence out because it is a conjunct of that conjunction. All right, so in this case, we see that the reverse is true. Uh, we can make conjunctions out of um, statements or propositions that are complex where those complex propositions figure as um, conjuncts. So uh, premise one here says that if A is large, then C is a cube. Premise two says that either B is the same shape as D or B is small. So I can make a conjunction, whatever, whichever order I want to make these um, as the conjuncts for, but I can make a conjunction out of them. Okay, so I've made a con uh, conjunction out of those statements. The conjunction in three uh, has step one for its first conjunct and uh, step two for its second conjunct. Uh, four is another conjunction where step two is the first conjunct and step one is the second conjunct. In either case, they should be true, but we do have to cite conjunction introduction. We see that that ends up being a good inference. And we see that this is a good inference as well. All right, that completes this video on the conjunction rules in Fitch. I hope you found it useful.